Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be looking at iPad OS for your iPad. Now, as you know, iOS 13 for the iPad was renamed to iPad OS, and going forward, all iPads will be running on iPad OS. So let's dive in on this iPad Pro right over here and take a look at all the new features on this new system. Now, one cool thing with the Apple Pencil is normally when you press the eraser, and when you try to erase, the whole thing just gets erased away. Now what you can do is you can actually erase individual parts like a real eraser of every single thing that you draw. What you do is you tap on the pencil and tap again and then go to the pixel eraser. And then what happens is you can delete it just like this, which is fantastic. This is going to make a lot of people very happy. Now another amazing feature is with the keyboard. If you have the keyboard enabled, you can simply pinch on the keyboard or press and hold right over here and it's going to, you can just slide over right here and it's going to turn into a floating keyboard that you can put anywhere that you want on the screen. Now if you have it on the side over here, you can use one finger to type anything that you want. When you're done with this, you can just uh, expand it just like this, all right? Now one thing I really like about the, uh, the, the new keyboard is, let me, let me just launch uh, Safari here and let me just grab a slide over for the notes application. So let me grab this guy, I'm going to slide over right over here. And then what I can do is, if I go back over here, all right, uh, let's just uh, say I want to do a, a new note, okay, so right here. Now the keyboard came up, what I can do is, I can tap, press and hold, and just slide over here, and boom. So that keyboard can now be right here under my notes, and I can take notes by looking at the window right over here. So that is absolutely fantastic. On top of that, if I were to grab this guy, and I start activate multitasking, and even if I were to make this a little bit smaller, uh, just to multitask, I can do the same thing with the keyboard. I can have the keyboard on the corner just like this. So that's a great way to multitask. I can take notes on the notes application by looking over here at this article or whatever that I might have over here. All right. And of course, a really cool feature has to do with the screenshots. So let me go to Safari real quick. Let me just kill that away. So here I have the, uh, the, the website, all right? Let me go to the home page over here. So let's say I want to take a screenshot of the whole entire website, not just this part, but the entire website. All I do, I can grab my Apple Pencil, just go like this from the corner, and that's going to activate the screenshot. And on the top, you have the option to choose just the screen you just did or do a full page, all right? So now uh, I can take screenshot of the entire page. As you can see, when I'm done, I'll click on done, and I can save that as a PDF to files, all right? I can save that and access that later, no problem. And then of course, I can also, using this pen, uh, do some markup if I have to do any of that stuff as well, all right? So again, to take a screenshot, you just, uh, you can swipe that away. You can grab your Apple Pencil and from the corner, just go like this, boom, that's a screenshot. And of course, one of the greatest features of iPad OS is the fact that Safari is now a full-fledged desktop class browser. It's not, if you go to eBay.com, for example, let's just go to eBay.com over here. Uh, it's not going to go to the mobile website. It's going to go to the full-fledged website with full uh, desktop class functionality. So that's another feature a lot of people are going to enjoy. And the next thing we have on the new iPad OS, one of the biggest revamps is the new home screen. So if you look at the screen, you'll notice a couple of differences. Now, first and foremost, all the icons are smaller so you can fit even more apps on a given screen. So that's fantastic. And also, as you can see, we now have a widget screen right here on the side. And this is the same screen that was normally hidden on this side. You would have to swipe it over. Okay, so this is the widgets all over here. Uh, this thing here is fully customizable. And also, if you want, you can actually hide it. So basically, what you want to do is you want to go all the way down. All right. Uh, you want to click on edit. And from here, you can actually uncheck uh, this box here that says keep on the home screen, the today view. So that's, that's the today view. So now you can actually swipe it over and have your old style right here. And if you do want to access today's view, you can swipe just like this to access all your widgets right over here. Now I do prefer having it just like this with it enabled at all times. But I'll also let you know, you can also modify all the widgets on the actual screen. So you can add more widgets uh, from the list here at the bottom that has a green plus symbol next to it, 
or you can remove widgets if you don't want them. So if I want to remove the CNN application, I can tap on that one. It's going to remove that. When I click done, uh, the CNN application at the bottom is gone and I have everything else right over here. And on top of that, real quick, if you go all the way down, click on edit, you can rearrange things as you please. So let me just remove this, for example, and then let me uh, take the batteries and put it to the top over here. And then I'm going to click done. And now, as you can see, batteries on the top and the other thing has been removed. So that's the new today's view on your actual screen plus smaller icons on the screen. The next thing we have with iPad OS, the new iPad OS, is the new dark mode. So right now we have the light mode. As you can see, everything is uh, white in the background when you go into the settings or when you launch applications that are installed by app, uh, Apple. So everything has a white background, okay? Now when I go to my settings over here, and if I go into my display, I can actually switch over to the dark mode, okay? This is gonna be a system-wide application of the actual dark mode. So when I go into my Apple apps, such as a calendar, it's gonna be black and white. If I go into my news application, it's gonna be black in the background, so it's gonna be very easy to read. When I go back out, even the folders and the background of the actual widgets here on today's view and at the bottom here is darkened so it's easy on the eyes at night time. Now what else you can do is you can go over here, pull this down, the control center from the top right, press and hold on the brightness slider and disable dark mode from here. And as soon as I disable it, you'll see the differences on the home screen as well. See that? Everything goes from uh, black to white. So you can turn it on and off right over here. Now again, every app installed by Apple is going to be affected by the dark mode and also developers are going to be adding more apps that are going to utilize this night mode. So if, if I go to home real quick just to show you one more example and if I go over here, if I enable dark mode, Look at that, everything becomes dark, okay? So it's gonna be easy on the eyes at the night time. Now when I go to the settings, uh, let me just keep it at light right now. You can also set the light and dark to come on automatically. So if I enable this, I can go into options. From here, I can choose sunset to sunrise. So at sunset, the night mode, the dark mode gets enabled, and at sunrise, the light mode gets enabled. So everything is gonna be automatic. You can also set a custom schedule that fits your own needs. So you do have the option to customize this mode. Now the next thing I wanna talk about has to do with the new multitasking enhancements. Now iPad already had some multitasking features but they have enhanced it even further. So just to give an example, let me launch Safari right over here, that's a web browser. And what I can do is I can do the slide over view which was already in existence but now we have new tactics with it. So let's just grab this calculator right over here, dump it to the side, and that's a slide over view. Now what I can have is I can have multiple apps inside slide over. So I can pull this up, uh, grab an application from here. Let's grab the uh, music application and dump it right here, okay? Now I have two slide over windows. All I do is pull this up a little bit, and it's gonna show me both. I can switch back and forth between two slide over windows. I can even have three if I wanted to. Right here, let's grab this, put it back over here. Let's grab that, put it back over here, and let's grab this and put it over here as well. So I can even have three windows as you can see. And if I grab the bottom and just pull it up a little bit, I can access all three. I can get rid of them individually just like this, all right? And if I tap on one of them, that comes to the forefront. And if I want to get rid of the entire package right here, I can just swipe it away and it's gone. So that's the slide over enhancements. We are also going to have some enhancements as far as multitasking is concerned. So we all know that we can do multitasking like this. So I can grab one of these windows right here and I can push it all the way to the side and that gives us the regular multitasking. That's great. And if I don't want a window, I can just push it away and it's gone. Now what you can do is, let's say I open a brand new tab, and let's say I just go to apple.com, and let's say I wanna multitask on two Safari windows. So I can grab any one of these windows, just press and hold, and I can drag it just like this to the side, and that's going to activate 
uh, split screen multitasking for the same app. Okay, now I can have two windows running side by side, uh, two safaris. And of course, when I'm ready to get rid of one of these, I can just swipe it away, no problem. Now I can do split screen uh, multitasking for per app on other apps as well. So if I tap on the notes application, for example, let's say I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do split screen tasking on, uh, with the notes application. Maybe I wanna take a look at one note and use the other, uh, use one note uh, to build on the other note. So all I can do is I can grab any one of these notes and I can just push it to the side, boom, I've got a uh, split screen multitasking for the notes application. So that's great. And of course I can change the size as I please, all right? And then when you want to get rid of something, you just push it away and it's gone. So let's launch the mail application right over here. And again, I can grab any one of these guys, okay? I can push it to the side and I can do split screen testing. So I can continue looking at my emails over here and look at multiple emails as I please. I can uh, compose one email over here and reference another email as I type a response. So that's also very good. And then when you pull this up, uh, I do want to let you know, it's gonna be saved on the top here as a split screen window. So you can come back to it if you want to. So if I was over here and I looked at something and I got an idea, I can go back over here uh, to my apps and just pick this one and continue working right here. But when I'm done, I can just swipe either one of these away and we are in fact good to go. So those are some really great enhancements for multitasking. And of course, the next big thing is the photos application. So if I go to my photos application, I have a picture right over here. Now, let's say I want to edit this photo. I now have powerful tools to do so right on my iPad. I tap on edit. It starts the editing process. And look at that. On the side over here, I have the option to go from this uh, to the filters, uh, to changing the, uh, the crop factor and everything and rotating the picture just like that if I want to rotate this stuff. Uh, but if I go over here, which is the uh, coloring and all that stuff, I can do the auto coloring. When I tap on it, I get a slider and I can slide this up and down to change automatically. Or I can go to individual uh, components such as exposure and change every single thing manually, including brilliance, highlights, shadows, uh, contrast, uh, brightness, black point, and all these options as you can see. So if you're a professional photographer, these are going to help you a lot, all right? This is absolutely fantastic. And the same editing tools also, in fact, apply to uh, the uh, video. So if you have video, you can do the same things. You can add filters and you can change every single aspect of that video that I showed you right over here. So that is absolutely fantastic as well. The next thing I wanna talk about has to do with your Apple Pencil uh, and the Notes application. So, so I'm gonna grab my pencil, I'm gonna launch the Notes application right over here. I'm gonna say new note right over here, okay? Let me just maximize this. And I will let you know when you press the pen icon here, you get a brand new toolbox as you can see, okay? You also have this uh, ruler option over here. You can tap on this. It can even auto minimize this if you don't want it. So it goes to the side. And the best part is you can grab this toolbar and put it anywhere you want on the screen, all right? So I can grab it again. I can put it anywhere. It expands when you tap on it or I can just keep it uh, expanded at all times but I can always grab this and put it anywhere I want. So that makes uh, working with these things much easier, okay? So look at that beautiful ruler application that allows you to uh, make precise lines. So that's some new enhancements for the Apple Pencil in the Notes application. Now the next feature that a lot of people are going to absolutely love is going to be the mouse support. So I have a mouse right over here and I can actually use this to control the iPad. So I'm gonna put it right over here for a second. Let me show you how to enable that. So you go to settings and then you go to Bluetooth and make sure that your mouse, in my case, this is called the designer mouse, is in fact enabled and it's connected via Bluetooth to your iPad. And you can do this for any mouse that you want that has Bluetooth functionality. Now, after you're done with this one, you have to go down and you have to go to accessibility. And then from there, what you wanna do is you wanna go to touch. And then on the top, you have assistive touch and you want to make sure that you enable this and then you have this little menu over here that pops up and it gives you access to a bunch of things, all right, uh, which is gonna be useful with the mouse. But here's the mouse pointer, the black one. And the, as you can see, uh, let me just, I'm gonna grab this mouse, put it on the table. And as you can see, I'm using the mouse. So I can uh, click on things to go inside. As you can see, I can go back by going over here 
Okay, I can press uh, this button, access this button over here. Uh, I can go home by using this. Uh, I can launch applications. Let me go to App Store. If I go, to, if I want to go back, I do a right click that brings up this menu, and then I click Home. It goes right back. So we do have full mouse support uh, for the iPad with the iPad, the new iPad OS. So that's a great functionality as well. Now when you're done using the mouse, you just go back to settings and you just disable uh, the assistive touch functionality, all right? So that's great. And finally, another great update is you are now able to attach USB drives and SD drives via the port right here. And as soon as you plug it in, you can go to My Files, which is right over here, and start to access those files directly. You can transfer documents back and forth between your uh, SD card or whatever you use uh, to plug back over here using a dongle or through direct connection. All right, so those are some of the new features on iPad OS. I'm really excited about this because I do use the iPad as a daily tablet. So if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below and let me know. And for now, guys, have a fantastic day, all right? And of course, let me know what is your favorite feature in the new iPad OS down below. Is it the mouse support? Is it the desktop class version of Safari? Just drop those comments down below and let me know and have a fantastic day. All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.